This lesson is on sample space and tree diagrams. A sample space contains the list of all possible outcomes of a certain event. We will always want to list these outcomes in brackets or braces. For example, flipping a coin. When one flips a coin, there are two possible outcomes. This tree diagram shows two branches illustrating that there are two possible outcomes. You can either flip and get a tail or a head. Therefore, the sample space for flipping a coin is tails or heads. The sample space for rolling a die contains six possible outcomes. When one rolls a die, they could roll a 1, a 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. When we list the sample space, we can simply make a list of the numerals. If we wanted to pick the high schools in Pitt County, the sample space, we would be looking at the space of J.H. Rose, South Central High School, D.H. Conley, North Pitt High School, Farmville Central High School, and Aiden Grifton High School. Yeah, that one's really ugly. Next, states beginning with O. Ohio, Oregon, and Oklahoma. Our prime numbers from 1 to 30 contain the sample space starting with 2 because 1 is not a prime number. Remember that a prime number must be made up of factors, two factors, 1 and the number. Since 1 has only one factor, which is 1, it is not prime. Therefore, 2 is the only even and the first prime number. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, and 29. Tree diagrams are used to help organize larger sample spaces. Particularly if there are two, out, or two events, it makes it much easier to organize the information. For example, if we flip two coins, the first time we flip a coin, there are two possible outcomes, tails or heads. But then the second time, we could also get tails or heads. Therefore, there are one, two, three, four possible outcomes, tails then tails, tails then heads, heads tails, and heads, heads. And this would be our sample space. If we flip a coin, then roll a die, the first event has two possible outcomes, again, tails or heads. Then with rolling a die, we could roll a one, two, three, four, five, or six. Since there are six branches here and six branches here, if we add those together, we have 12 possible outcomes. So our sample space would be tails one, tails two, tails three, tails four, tails five, heads one, heads two, heads three, heads four, heads five, and I don't know why I left off tail six, but there it is. So there are all possible, 12 possible outcomes. A tree diagram for a much more complex example would have many more branches. So for example, 
If we want to look at all possibilities for buying a vehicle, if we are choosing SUV or car for style, choosing Ford, Chevy, or Toyota for make, and choosing red, black, navy, or silver for color, we first want to decide, the first decision to be made is whether we are choosing an SUV or a car. So when there are this many and we know the branches are going to break off and form a lot of branches on our tree, I would want to make sure that I make this good and wide. So this would be SUV and this would be car. For the, after those choosing the type of vehicle, we'd have to choose from Ford, Chevy, or Toyota. So I'll put up here F for Ford, C for Chevy, and T for Toyota. Upon choosing our make, we then have choices of four colors. So we want four branches from each of the preceding branches. And of course, we would label those with the first letter of each word, red, black, navy, silver. All right, since each of these branches, we have four, if we add these up at the end, four times six gives us 24 possible outcomes. So our sample space contains 24 outcomes. But I'm not gonna do the sample space at this time. So if we go back to the subway problem we did at our introduction, we can make a tree diagram for that as well. To start with, there were four different types of breads. We had white, wheat, Italian, and honey oat. So I'll put honey oat there. Then we were choosing from four meats. We had turkey, ham, roast beef, or salami. And then three cheeses. If you ever feel like you're running out of room, just take one of the tree limbs here and just extend it like I just did. And of course, we had American provolone cheddar. And as you can see, I would count at the end here. This was, you could have choose white <clears throat> turkey American, white turkey provolone, white turkey cheese. So this was actually three choices. So each one of these smaller branches is three. So I would write three <clears throat> or just count. I'm writing the three <clears throat> for illustrative purposes and then count how many you had. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and sixteen times three gives us forty-eight possible choices or combinations. 
Notice we can also determine the total number of combinations by recognizing that for bread, there were four choices. For meat, there was four choices. And for cheese, uh, three choices. So if we multiply those together, 4 times 3 is 12, times 4 is also 48. So be sure you know how to create those tree diagrams. Now let's look at probability. Probability is the chance or how likely it is that something will happen. Oftentimes we hear probability used in terms of a percentage chance, such as when we are watching the weather report on the news. So 10% chance of rain, you would, might hear. Um, one thing to consider is that probability is a number between 0 and 1. And if we are given 10% as our chance of rain, that means the probability is 0 0.10. We also hear probability used in words such as impossible, unlikely, um, possible, or an even chance. If there is an even chance, outcomes are equally likely, so that's a probability of 1 half or 0.5. If, a, if an event is impossible to happen, the probability is zero. Certain to happen, it is equal to one. So we can equate this to 0%, 50%, and 100% as well. If we want to find the probability of an event, <clears throat> well, actually, this slide actually outlines what I just said, that the probability of an event occurring is represented by a number between zero and one. Um, inclusive, meaning it can equal zero and it can include one as well. To find the probability of a, from a tree diagram, we first want to count how many outcomes fit our criteria. For example, in the last one we just did with the Subway sandwiches, there were 48 possible outcomes. So using our tree diagram, that's all we do is count how many outcomes we had. The second step is to divide by the total outcomes. So the outcomes that fit your criteria divided by the total number of outcomes. In this case, this we, if we were finding the probability of, say, um, a sandwich with white bread, we would take all the possible numbers of sandwiches with white bread and divide by 48, which is our total outcomes. If we wanted to roll a die, then flip a coin, and then find the probability of getting an even outcome, then we would, the probability of getting an even outcome would be any outcome where when we rolled a die, we had a two, four, or six. We could find the probability of getting heads or even and a heads. So let's practice. We first want to draw a tree diagram and find the probabilities. So if we are asked to choose between large, medium, small, or a mini pizza, we obviously have four options, so we want to start off with four branches. So that was large, medium, small, and mini. Our toppings we could choose from were extra cheese, pepperoni, beef, mushroom, or pineapple, and you can only choose one topping. So you count up the number of toppings, one, two, three, four, five. Therefore, we need five branches from each one of these. All right, so if we label these extra cheese, pepperoni, beef, mushrooms, or pineapple, and I'm not going to copy that for each one at this time, then we would list those and then determine how many possible outcomes we have. So again, we have we could get large with extra cheese, large with pepperoni, large with beef, large with mushrooms, or large with pineapple. So that's five possibilities of, for large. Therefore, we would have five here and five here, giving us a possible 20 outcomes or 20 different types of pizza. So for part A, if you were asked, what is the probability of getting a large pepperoni, you can see that there's just one of those, large pepperoni. There's one of those out of 20, so therefore the probability would be 1 out of 20. For part B, it asks the probability of getting beef pizza. Well, remember... Uh, let's see, mushroom, pineapple... 
cheese, pepperoni, beef, mushroom, pineapple. There are several of those. You can actually get um, beef on a large, beef on a medium, beef on a small, or beef on a mini. So therefore, there are four possible options for getting beef. For small, with meat as a topping, you could get a small with beef or a small with pepperoni. So therefore, there are two options out of the 20. And that is finding probability from a tree diagram.